All right, my Kurt Van receiving trailer hitch just arrived. Oh, guys. Hey, for you guys out there that don't know, I own a 2020 Ram Promaster 1500 cargo van. It's a 136 wheelbase high roof and I converted it into a camper van. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be installing a receiver hitch um, onto the bumper frame, uh, the main frame. That's how you do it on these uh, vehicles. And it's made by Kurt, C-U-R-T. It's the model number 13295. Now, I did my research into this the best I could, and it seems that this particular hitch will fit my vehicle. But before you guys do any of this or put this hitch on yours, please go over the owner spec, go over the applications for your year to make sure that it fits. Apparently, since you're watching this video right now, it must have worked out for me. <laughs> so, so chances are this particular one fit. I'm going to go over the parts that come with it, the hitch itself. I will show you the minimal amount of tools it takes. Uh, it weighs 40 pounds, so the hard part of this for me is going to be when I attach it to the frame of the bumper between the hitch that weighs 40 pounds and the weight of the, the frame itself, it's gonna be difficult for me by myself to get it up in order to get the bolts in there. But we'll see what happens. I have an idea for particular that. Uh, hitch that I'm putting on has a tongue weight, which means that's the weight that can be pressed down onto the hitch itself. Uh, of 500 pounds and it has a towing power of 5,000 pounds. So again, check your uh, vehicle's um, applications and make sure that you're within those requirements. You don't want to overdo that. So I'll, I will never be pulling anything more than that or have any kind of weight than that. Basically what I want this hitch on is for doing a carrier rack to, to store things when I'm traveling or just to have a bike rack thinking, or, or, or just anything that can be outside of the van so I can keep the room in the van and not have to store everything in there. So with that all said, guys, let's get into it. Here we go. This is the Kurt receiver hitch that I am installing. Of course, there's Dexter under there. He wants to know what's going Well, this on. is the big giant box that it came in. Uh, it was delivered pretty quickly, and I did buy this from Amazon. Uh, this was a little bit more money than a couple of the other ones, but this got the best reviews and it seemed to have a little bit more tongue weight and pulling that it comes with. These are two wires with these little screw things on the end that you're going to put on the end of a carriage bolt in order to feed it through or fish it through the, the, uh, the, tri the hitch itself. And uh, that will go through these and into the bolt and uh, these are the nuts that'll be going on that. These are pretty sure uh, three quarter inch. Uh, these are 16 millimeter. And uh, so that's it. These are the four bolts that come with it. And these are the two carriage bolt and these two uh, pieces of wire that fish through it. And I'll show you how this is done. This is a pain in the ass also. It can be easy or it can be frustrating. Um, some of the tools I'll use is, I'll use a socket wrench. I'm using a 3 8 inch one for all this, uh, but it goes to a Torex uh, T30 socket right here. And then I have also, uh, where if I need a half inch reducing down to a 3 8 inch, I, that way I only had to use one socket. I've got 16 millimeter and a 15 millimeter and a 3 quarter inch socket. Pretty much all the tools I need. I did have to go out and get a torque wrench. Well, let me tell you a little about that. These couple of the, <clears throat> the, the bolts have to be torqued to like, I think 40 uh, pounds. And the other one has to be torqued to 110 pounds. I didn't want to go out and buy that, but I went to AutoZone. And what you can do at AutoZone, if you have one in your area, is they have this lend out uh, program and I think you can borrow it for like 90 days so what I had to do was this actual thing cost $110 I put a deposit down for what it cost but when I'm done with this I'll just bring it back and they refund my whole money so that ain't a bad deal got to make sure you don't break it or lose it or drop it because these are calibrated and can um, be messed up came with a, a set of instructions three pages of instructions on what to do 
Uh, I would recommend watching a few YouTube videos first before even going through these instructions. So that's it guys. I am going to go ahead and open those doors as wide open as they can, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do it's it first. It's real nice that these doors do open that wide. So let me show you here real quick. Uh, we're gonna have four of these bolts or these screws or whatever along here. These are the Torex, where I'm gonna use the T30 a socket you got four here and i'll show you under them underneath and you'll see there's four more here towards the end there's one here at the very end and then there's one here and it's the same thing on the other side and then once i'm under here i'll show you later the other bolts that have to come out here but let's go ahead and get this bumper cover off i did use this extension because it brings it out past the bumper and it's not constantly hitting so i'd recommend one of those way you can spin it right around. So now this bumper cover should just slide right off. There you go. Now I have to take two bolts off here, two off here, and there's a nut, a half inch, a three quarters inch nut underneath that I have to get off also. This is the part that the hitch will be attaching to, and that's why I have to see if these holes line up, which I'll probably do right now. Ugh. 40 pounds, just this. They seem to line up pretty good, hopefully. We'll see when we take this off. Okay, I'm going to leave these at hand. I can hand loosen those and I'll go underneath and get the three quarters and this, this whole thing here will pull off then. And then, I don't have any over in this corner here. If you have, I have a backup light, but I don't have backup sensors. And if I did, it would all be located over in this right hand uh, passenger side area over here that you would have to disconnect. So I don't have it, so I don't have to do that, but keep an eye out for that if you guys do. Where I use the 16 millimeter on the ones up here that now I can just undo with hand. Now I have to step it down to a 15 millimeter for the two bolts, uh, two nuts that are underneath. So that way, once they're off, I'll come back out here, take these off, and this whole thing should drop right off. We shall see. Not on my head. Guys, I ran into my first problem. This nut that was on this back left side over here was real kind of hard to get off it's a I used a 15 millimeter so on the four in the front it's 16 millimeter and definitely on the two in the back underneath is 15 millimeter but if you look at that there I was all stripped and I thought I was gonna have a hard time with that but I did get it off so the rest of this should be pretty easy so hopefully that's my only hiccup so far I will replace this one and I will take that bolt that stationary in there and I'll wipe it down with some uh, WD and clean it all up so a new uh, nut would go on there pretty easy. So let's go ahead and finish this off. I'll take it off and we'll assemble the, uh, the whole hitch assembly. now taken off that so I'm gonna clean that all up there and we'll go to start assembling the hitch to that and the hard part is gonna be getting it back on like I said earlier and fishing those bolts carriage bolts through so we'll take it through each step before I start assembling this where I had a hard time with these bolts basically this one I'm gonna go ahead 
These are stationary. I'm gonna put some WD on them and I'll clean them up real good. Get all that crud off it. So now comes another fun part. I have to fish through this section of the, of the uh, frame that was on the van, this carriage plate, a carriage bolt, and then I'll secure it with this nut. But I have to use one of these wires that basically screws on this. So I can pull that through. So let me show that how this is done. Can be frustrating or it can go really easy. So now what we have is in order to bring the frame to the, the hitch, we're going to have to feed this little wire. There's two holes here through back to these two spaces back here. And once we do that, we take the square hole carriage blocker and put it through and attach it to this carriage bolt. So what I wanna do is I wanna take this end and I'm going to feed it through here until it comes out to that space. Now I wanna take one of my square hole blockers and I'm gonna take a one of the carriage bolts. I'm gonna screw it onto this piece of wire. So this is gonna fish this whole thing through here so I have a good sturdy connection through. There you go. Man, that was pretty easy. Let's go ahead and try it with the other one. Take this end, I'm gonna go through the hole. I'm gonna bring it down through the space. We're gonna insert our square hole blocker. And then we're going to screw on the carriage bolt again. I'm a righty. <laughs> Let's get that on real good. Get the blocker on there. And let's see if we can fish this one through as easy as I did the other one. There you go. My gosh. I was dreading that. And it ended up being easy. <laughs> so let's go to the next step. Okay, now that I fished these carriage bolts through the opening, we want to take these lines and put them through the hitch itself. So we can pull it both together. Kind of skip a little part there because I had a hard time lining getting that wire through the bolts and that. So what I had to do is you had to lift the back structure up over on top of this, let the bolts kind of go through and then turn it up on its side. So, so then the, these bolts kind of stay in place and then you can quickly get these uh, three quarter inch nuts on them. And you got to make sure that these two holes and all this lines up over here because this is where your hardware is going to go back to the van and on um, both of them it seems to line up nicely so now it's just a matter of getting everything tightened down so again there's those two that i'm going to tighten down now with a three quarter inch ratchet everything's lined up on this side everything's lined up on this side and now i can put it back up on the van if i can lift it Now I'm just going to uh, torque uh, the 10 millimeters down to the specified. It said 48 pounds. So I set the 
torque wrench. It's a half inch socket, so I have to reduce it down to a three eighths because that's what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and do all the uh, tens, M10s, I think they're called, uh, these here to 48, and then the two half inch ones underneath or the three quarters, I forget what they are, but they're supposed to be at 110. So I'm going to torque them down and then I'm going to put the cover back on. We should be all good right. to go. I did it. I mean, I had a few little issues. Um, basically, uh, they're my fault, but I like how this hitch does not, as you can see it, looking straight down at it does not protrude out where I'm going to smash my knee on it all the time like it did with my truck and my and my boat but it's on there real tight it seems like a really sturdy hitch and uh, that's it and the cover went on nicely and she's like whoo that's it guys oh man too old for this crap right crawling up and underneath the car and stuff in the van and stuff like that but I got it done and it's on there perfect and uh, the, the tools that they told you to use in the beginning are correct. 15 millimeter socket, a 16 millimeter socket, a uh, three quarter inch socket. Um, just play around with what works for best for you. Make sure you have all that stuff. The uh, torque wrench, I don't know. I guess I could have done without it, but uh, I did torque everything down. I think if I had an impact um, drill, it would have made things a lot quicker and a lot better. So it's on there. I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. And hey guys, this is the Kurt model number 13295. And according to uh, their specification, it fits most Pro Masters from 2014 up to, I'm at 2020, and I've seen uh, reports that, I mean, you know, people saying that it did fit a 2021 and a 2022. So, you know, do your homework first and uh, don't buy the cheap one. This one here was about. I think it was $210, maybe with tax about $220. There's one out there for $175. I don't think it's as good. Uh, this one here I would definitely recommend. And if you take your time and do it yourself, you'll save yourself a few hundred dollars in installation fee. And it's, it's quite easy to do. It's just time consuming. They say it takes 40 minutes. It took me two hours. <laughs> so I'll be honest with you, but it was done right. And I think if I had the right tools and somebody to help me lift it up, I, I relied on a five gallon bucket just to keep it up there. So, hey guys, thanks for following Walker's World. Uh, just another little van enhancement. And I'll be back out backpacking and hopefully using this baby here real soon. So you guys take care and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.